Day eight of Broncos training camp, temperatures rising, and the play on the field was extra hot on this Thursday. Hello, and thank you for joining us for our daily recap. I'm Phil Milani, alongside Nick Ferguson and Eric Dalala. Nick, what are your general takeaways from today? Well, you're absolutely right. It was a tower inferno as we saw Darius Shepard come out and Blazer Trail. Who, who would have thought a guy signs day one and all of a sudden he catches this explosive play? If you are one of these other wide receivers on the team, you are highly upset because how is it that this guy comes in and he gets a crowd so excited? But yeah, great practice today. First play shows up, he's just, this is easy. Yeah, this is easy. <laughs> but you know what, I tell you what, it, it should be because he's been around Nathaniel Hackett, he's been in this offense for a while. But this just tells you what this offense could be if everyone gets on the same page. Yeah, I'll do my best here too. The offense was on fire, Phil. They, uh, no, I think the end of the uh, practice there, they did, they did some two minute work. That was the best the offense has looked during training camp, I think. A nice pass to Albert O from Russell Wilson. A uh, fourth and four pass, 34 yards down the field to Cortland Sutton, who went up and got it. And then Russell Wilson actually called the play to end the drive through a touchdown to Trey Quinn. That was the best we've seen them. Nathaniel Hackett said it, it sometimes takes a while for them to get into that, to make the two-minute drill work. And so for them to be successful so early, I thought was impressive. That's why you brought Russell Wilson here. So when you're in those games, if you're down four points, to beat the Chiefs, to beat the Chargers, to beat the Bills in the playoffs. If it gets to that, you can go win those games. We saw that. Now, how do you think that's working, Eric, with uh, Russ and Nathaniel Hackett? Like, who's calling those plays and doing what they want to do out there? Well, I think you've got to rely on both. I think before the game, going into it, when you're game planning, it's going to be kind of a combination of them scripting some stuff together, working on the game plan. What is Russ like? What is Nathaniel Hackett like? But then I think you have to trust Russ in those big moments. You know, when there's a minute left in the game, if he sees something out there, he should have, I think, that autonomy to, to change the play or go to something that he likes. And even on that Corlin Sutton play, Nathaniel Hackett said they didn't even run that play the way that it was necessarily supposed to go, but Russ made it work. Corlin made a big grab. I think if you're a great quarterback in this league, you kind of deserve that, uh, that leeway there. And if you make plays, no one's going to stop you. And Russ, we trust. And absolutely, with the more time you spend with the wide receiver and the quarterback, you start to build that chemistry, and now it's starting to show up on the field. But the only thing that we're waiting for is game day. Can we get it on game day? But I want to go back to a point that you make. I mean, it's important to have a quarterback like Russell because he's a veteran guy. And one thing that's been proven is that, and he showed it today by checking the play, is that and when you get into that crunch time, the fourth quarter, that's when you need your impact players to absolutely show up. And knowing as though Russell has the ability to change the play, to do something entirely different, and it still ends up being a plus, you have to love that if you're a member of Broncos country. Yeah, when you see it in practice, that's good too. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Yes, that's back that. <laughs> Finding a way to get another uh, fire reference in there. <laughs> uh, not only are the guys on fire, Nick is on fire too, and you're, you're starting to bring some heat as well. Uh, I like to see it. Uh, I wanted to ask you real quick uh, just about the days off here where they're doing the jog through and then the day after that. Do you see a difference out there today where they're a little extra juice in their legs? Well, yeah, you, you have to because that you have to reward the coach for taking, you know, the pressure off you and know, giving you some of those kind of three-quarter practices where you're just kind of going through the motions, getting a lot of those reps. But when it comes down and, hey, listen, I mean, we haven't got to a game there. We're getting close to it. You have to reward that coach. Go out, show exactly what you could do, full speed, and that leaves a lasting memory on that coaching staff. Yeah, I mean, I think they're definitely working hard enough. They're putting in the effort. You can see that. I think they – you know, they trust Nathaniel Hackett. I think they're playing for Nathaniel Hackett. And I do think maybe an underrated piece of those those days off, those breaks, is that while the intensity was really high, there have been no fights. There haven't been there hasn't been pushing and shoving. I think that probably helps too, where you're backing off a little bit. You're not going hard against the same guy four days in a row where you're letting stuff get under your skin. I think it's nice that you're avoiding that. And I'd assume the days off in between are, are partially helping with that. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, let's switch gears here a little bit and talk about the running backs. We heard from Javante Williams after practice today. One of the big storylines coming into this season, how are the Broncos going to use Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon together? How, how do you see that unfolding uh, through the first uh, week and a week or so here? At well, once now that we come in with the pads on, now you get a chance to see what this offense could look like with the run game, could look like with these guys. But I also throw Mike Boone in there as well. I mean, anytime we've seen him in, he showed a lot of flashes, looked really quick. And I talked to Steve Atwaters, and I would tell him, I'd say, well, he reminds me of a guy I watched back in the day when I was a kid, and that was Dave Meg, being able to be utilized in third down and create those matchups. So if we can get these guys together, I'm going to call it little shot 
Shop of Horrors, Feed Me Seymour, and this offense is going to be spectacular with a ground game like that, opening up the Tower Inferno once again for the receivers downfield. So I love what I'm seeing. Man, where are you drinking today, man? I need, a, I need some of that. <laughs> uh, Eric, what did you hear from Javante? I mean, it seems like he's the guy right now. He's the guy. I mean, you did see Melvin work in there quite a bit, but when Javante gets going, it's hard to stop him. And I think you saw that in practice on this Thursday that he's going to hit that initial block and then he's going to hit that initial defender. And you can't necessarily count on getting him down then. You know, I think after that, you know, it's fair to say Javante is going to go another five yards because even when he gets tackled, he's falling forward. Um, I do think a big thing to recognize with this offense is they're going to run the ball a lot more than I think people expect. Wouldn't surprise me if there's 30, 35 carries a game between Javante and Melvin. They're going to put the ball on the ground because that sets up play action. It's going to set up some of those shots down the field like Nick was talking about. And this still is, this outside zone scheme, it's a run first offense. They have the talent to do it. And especially with all the questions along the offensive line, you know, moving pieces in and out, I think it's easier to gel with run blocking. Just go ahead and push those guys out of the way. Let Javante and Melvin do what they do best. But we want to see Rice throw it up to Corbin Sutton, though. they will do that, too. Well, yeah, we want to see that, but it's all about <laughs> scoring points and moving the chains. It doesn't make a difference who scores on this team. It's just the fact that at the end of the day, when that, the final seconds click off the, off the clock, well, who's, who has the victory, yep. right? And if the Broncos have the victory, it is muy fuego. <laughs> and with that, I think it's time to extinguish <laughs> this uh, this segment here. <laughs> That's going to do it for us. We'll be back tomorrow, Friday, uh, as a camp, the second week here, starts to wind down before a big day on Saturday. That's going to do it for us. Eric Lala and Nick Ferguson, I'm Phil Maloney. This has been our Broncos training camp daily recap. <laughs>